Hello, my name is Ken. I developed macular edema subsequent to a central retinal vein occlusion in 2002. I'm not a doctor and I have no medical training, so remember to consult your physician without delay when making medical decisions. One common after effect of a central retinal vein occlusion is macular edema. Macular edema is swelling or thickening of the part of the retina that is responsible for central vision. Most patients with central retinal vein occlusion develop macular edema in the months following the initial occlusion. The severity, however, differs from person to person. Let's take a few minutes to look at this condition as it occurs after a central retinal vein occlusion. In this photograph of the back wall of the eye, over to the left you can see the optic disc, the area where the optic nerve enters the back wall of the eye. To the left of the photograph would be the bridge of the nose. To the right would be the temple. In the center is the macula, an oval-shaped area of the retina approximately a quarter of an inch in diameter. The macula is responsible for central vision, the perception of objects directly in the line of sight. This vision is important for daily tasks like driving, reading, playing sports, and even recognizing faces. Near the center of the macula is a small indentation tightly packed with light-sensing cells called the fovea. The fovea picks up the finest details of central vision. In this view into the bottom half of the eye, the macula is the area above and below the foveal indentation. The word edema in the term macular edema means swelling, so macular edema is swelling or thickening of the macula as represented here. The term cystoid macular edema simply refers to swelling that includes pockets of fluid, cysts, that develop over time in the macular tissue. This was the side view of the retina, but if you were looking at the macula from the front, these cysts might be arranged something like this, with a larger cyst toward the center of the macula and progressively smaller cysts in the surrounding areas. The fluid usually found in these cysts is thought to seep out from the vessels that supply blood to the retina, vessels that run within and other vessels that run underneath the retina. More than half of the volume of the blood found in those vessels is a tan-colored fluid called plasma. The remainder of blood's volume is composed of solid components, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Most of the plasma portion of blood is made up of water. A smaller portion represents proteins that are dissolved within that water. After a central retinal vein occlusion, blood becomes backed up in the retinal blood vessels. The water and dissolved proteins in the plasma are then thought to make their way out of the blood through weakened vessel walls and into the retina where the fluid accumulates to form these cysts. As the macula swells due to this excess fluid, central vision in the affected eye may become blurry. Reading, in particular, may become more difficult. Various types of distortion may also occur. For example, straight lines may appear wavy. Depth perception may also seem to be reduced. Simple tasks may become a little more challenging, movements a little more clumsy. Your doctor may use a non-invasive diagnostic test called optical coherence tomography, abbreviated OCT, to measure the extent and progression of macular swelling. This is an example of a normal OCT cross-section. The black area at the top of the screen corresponds to the vitreous. The various layers of the retina are next, and underneath the retina is a vast network of blood vessels called the choroid. The white line on top of the retina corresponds to a layer called the nerve fiber layer, and the white line in the middle of the colored area corresponds to a layer called the retinal pigment epithelium. The distance between these two lines is considered the measure of the retinal thickness at that point. In the center of the image is the normal indentation of the fovea. A commonly referenced OCT measurement is the thickness of the retina at the center of this indentation. This thickness is measured in units called microns. A micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. In a normal eye, the central foveal thickness may be in the range of about 140 to 200 microns. By comparison, a human hair is about 80 microns wide, so in terms of hair widths, that's only two or three hair widths. 
At the rim of the foveal pit, the retina is substantially thicker. Where macular edema is present, though, the thickness at the fovea may equal or exceed the surrounding retina, so that the indentation is absent, or a mound actually develops in place of the indentation. In this image, the retinal thickness at the fovea is more than three and a half times the thickness of the previous normal image. Another test your doctor may recommend is called a fluorescein angiogram. Macular edema is commonly thought to arise as a result of the leakage of fluid from the blood vessels supplying the retina. A fluorescein angiogram is used to assess the extent of this capillary leakage in the macula. In this test, dye is injected into the arm and a series of black and white photographs of the inside of the eye are taken as the dye makes its way through the blood vessels of the retina. Usually the dye will clear out of the retina after a period of minutes, but when leakage into the macula is present, the photographs may show a characteristic pattern of lingering dye resembling the petals of a flower radiating out from the center of the macula. Sometimes the symptoms of macular edema after a central retinal vein occlusion will resolve without medical intervention. This is why your doctor may advise waiting to see if the eye starts to improve on its own. When macular edema has remained in place for many months, the changes in vision tend to be less reversible. But in many instances, macular edema that has been in place for only a few months may to some degree be reversible. Keeping in mind that the practice of medicine is constantly changing and that this video is likely out of date, as of the date of this video, several treatment options are available to help address macular edema. All of these treatments carry substantial risks, which should be discussed with your physician. Your physician will guide you in determining which, if any, treatments might be appropriate for you. Two of the more prominent tools for treating macular edema are corticosteroids and anti-VEGF agents. These drugs are thought to help reduce the leakiness of the retinal blood supply. Corticosteroids may be administered by various routes, orally as pills, topically as eye drops, by injection into the central cavity of the eye, or by injection to locations around the outside of the eye. This type of medication carries the risk of at least rapid cataract formation and an increase of pressure within the eye. In addition, administering this type of drug orally carries the added risks related to its presence throughout the entire body. Anti-VEGF agents, as of the date of this video, are injected directly into the central cavity of the eye, though none of these agents have been specifically approved by the FDA to treat central retinal vein occlusion. Anti-VEGF agents like Avastin, Lucentis, and Macugen are discussed in the separate video entitled, What are Anti-VEGF Agents? Injections directly into the central cavity of the eye are called intravitreal injections. These injections are also discussed in a separate video entitled, What is an Intravitreal Injection? One other drug which may be beneficial to a smaller number of patients is called acetazolamide. Acetazolamide is thought to speed up the absorption of water from the underside of the retina. In the past, a laser treatment called macular grid photocoagulation was used to treat macular edema caused by central retinal vein occlusion. However, a widely referenced study of central retinal vein occlusion patients where this treatment was tested found no statistically significant difference in sharpness of vision between treated and untreated central retinal vein occlusion patients. Therefore, the authors withheld their endorsement of this treatment in cases of macular edema due to central retinal vein occlusion. To sum up then, macular edema is swelling or thickening of the part of the retina that is responsible for central vision. As the macula swells, central vision usually becomes more blurry. Your doctor may recommend treatments to help reduce this swelling. 